Hello, I'm Lloyd Miner, Dean of Medicine at Stanford, and I'm pleased to welcome you to this virtual symposium in honor of Sam Gambier. First, I want to take this opportunity on behalf of all of us to thank Aruna Gambier for joining us today. Aruna, we're so honored that you could join us and celebrate together the amazing accomplishments of Sam. Sam truly was a remarkable person. He was a brilliant scientist, a mathematician, a physicist, a pioneer in so many respects, not only in the field of diagnostic imaging, but more broadly across all areas of biomedicine. Sam was, in addition to being a phenomenal scientist, a great clinician, a clinician who could see the opportunities for improving the diagnosis and treatment of people with cancer, but of multiple other diseases as well. And of course, Sam was an inspirational and influential leader. He built an incredible radiology department and he moved the entire field of radiology in ways that I don't think anyone could have imagined a decade ago. And for many of us, for all of us who had the privilege of knowing Sam, he was a dear friend and colleague. Now it's hard to really know how to honor Sam in a symposium of this nature. But I do think that Sam would be very pleased that we put together this symposium to talk about the future because that was always Sam's focus. He was always looking forward, looking for the new opportunities, looking for the ways to bring fundamental discovery-based science to the benefit of patients, for the ways to improve the diagnosis and early detection of diseases, in particular of cancer. And as we all know, cancer is a disease that had particularly horrific effects on Sam and on his family. There's so much more to be done. And I can think of no more fitting way to honor Sam than for each of us to commit ourselves in, in our own ways to furthering the cause and the mission that Sam was such a pioneer in envisioning. Through the Precision Health and Innovative Diagnostic Center, through the Canary Foundation, in so many other ways, Sam has given us a vision of what can be accomplished. That's a daunting task for us as individuals, as groups, to think about how we do this without Sam. But I think he would expect us to focus on that task. I think he would want us to do our very best to strive for the impact that he had a clear vision that we could obtain. And finally, I think he would be honored that we come together as colleagues because at its heart and core, advancing biomedicine is about the formation of teams and what a team builder Sam was. And we can all take inspiration and knowledge and pointers from the teams that Sam built and for his approach to building teams and empowering individuals to achieve their success as individuals and also to collectively have impact in ways that they would never be able to have just as individuals. Again, thank you for joining us. I look forward to an exciting symposium today to hearing from many of you about the work you're doing. And please know, and I know that I speak for all of my colleagues in Stanford Medicine, please know that the legacy of Sam Gambier is a legacy that is going to have impact and going to drive us here at Stanford today and for the years to come. And not only at Stanford, but the broader fields of imaging and diagnostics as well. It's now my privilege to turn the program over to Dr. Gary Gold, a very close colleague and friend of Sam's 
and the, and the interim chair of the Department of Radiology at Stanford. Gary? Sam was a true visionary leader in the fields of precision health, molecular imaging, and early disease diagnosis and treatment. Part of his vision, which was an area that Sam particularly excelled at, was bench to bedside science, the translation of basic science discoveries into meaningful clinical action. Today, in the spirit of furthering Sam's vision, I'm delighted to announce that the Department of Radiology, with the support of the Dean's Office, Aruna, and others in the Stanford community, is pursuing the development of a new solid targetry cyclotron at 1701 Page Mill Road. This new cutting edge piece of equipment will produce novel first in man radio tracers that were central to Sam's vision of clinical molecular imaging. The tracers developed here at Stanford in this new program will be useful in early diagnosis and therapy of cancer and many other diseases. The development of this new radiochemistry facility will represent a major expansion of our molecular imaging program. We will be recruiting the best in the world scientific faculty to lead this expansion and lead the way to take these new radio tracers into the clinic. The expansion of our molecular imaging program will fulfill Sam's vision for clinical molecular imaging, early disease detection, drug discovery, and provide additional basic science support for the new Theranostics Clinic recently opened in nuclear medicine. We're excited to continue this important part of Sam's vision and legacy, and would like to thank Lloyd, Aruna, the donors, and the entire Stanford community for their support. We're looking forward to seeing what the discoveries and progress this new center will produce for the department, the School of Medicine, and the entire university for many years to come. Now, we look forward to a great symposium and celebration of Sam's vision and legacy. Thank you. I'd like to hand the podium over to Dr. Joseph Wu, the leader of the Cardiovascular Institute at Stanford and a former student of Dr. Gambier's. So thank you, Gary. Um, just like being minor and Gary, I want to first welcome everyone to the symposium today uh, to celebrate Sam's legacy and impact. Uh, I'm very happy to see so many friends and colleagues who are able to join us uh, for this uh, celebration. I'm also extremely grateful of all the moderators and speakers uh, who are participating uh, today. I also want to thank Aruna for her uh, support of this uh, event. Now, I have the honor of being um, one of Sam's earliest attorneys. I did my PhD with uh, Sam from 2000 to 2004. Uh, in the Department of Molecular Pharmacology at UCLA. At that time, uh, Sam was still a relatively young junior faculty. I remember vividly the first time I met with Sam, explaining to him that I was a cardiology fellow and that I was interested in uh, gene therapy and stem cell therapy for heart disease. But I wanted to develop a way to uh, monitor the gene therapy and stem cell therapy uh, in vivo. Now, Sam then went on to explain to me in detail how molecular imaging can be used to solve uh, these specific questions that I was posing. Now, back then, <clears throat> Sam's lab was still small, and we would frequently meet and discuss on topics ranging from research uh, to family to hobbies to religion to politics and really on anything. In 2004, I was fortunate enough to be recruited from UCLA to Stanford. Uh, without a doubt, uh, had it not been his guidance and mentorship uh, and influence, I would not be here today. So thank you again, Sam. Now, throughout the day, you will hear from many of Sam's friends and colleagues and trainees 
about the impact that Sam had on all of them. To celebrate this legacy, uh, we have planned a full day of exciting talks. I want to first explain to the audience that the format you are seeing on your screen is called Slido. During the talks, you can enter your comments in the chat box. You can also tag a specific speaker in the Slido chat box if you want to ask someone a specific question. You can also share the event code with other colleagues, which is hashtag Gambia2021. Next slide. I also want to briefly go over the agenda for the day. After the opening remarks, so we will kick off the meeting with a plenary talk by Dr. Joe DeSimone, who is fittingly the inaugural Sam Gambia Professor of Translation and Medicine. Afterwards, we will have a talk by Dr. Andre Yagaru on the impact that Sam had on nuclear medicine at Stanford. This will be followed by a session in molecular imaging with talks by Drs. Anna Wu, Simon Cherry, Michael Phelps, and Kathy Ferreira. This will be followed by a one hour program featuring testimonies from many of Sam's attorneys. After a brief break, uh, session two will be on early cancer detection with talks by Drs. Ned Sharpless, Ralph Weisleder, David Suhi, and Sanjita Bhatia. And session three will be on precision health with talks by Drs. Rod Pettigrew, Mike Snyder, Jessica Mega, and Rob Caleb. The moderators for each session will be Sam's former trainees who are now faculty members. A couple of housekeeping items. We will be collecting memories in the Google form that will be posted in the chat box. After collecting all of your memories, we will share them in a digital book format after the event. If you have any questions, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to Gary or I. Next, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Nova Pelk, who will be our MC for today. Dr. Pelk is the Boston Scientific Applied Biomedical Engineering Professor of Radiology. Dr. Pelk has made similar contributions in CT imaging, specifically in methods to improve the information content and image quality, and to reduce the radiation exposure dosage. Dr. Pelk is a member of the National Academy of Engineering, Besides being an esteemed professor, you will also find him a dynamic MC for our event today. Thank you, Norbert. Norbert? Thank you, Joe, um, uh, for that kind introduction. I want to add my own welcome to those of uh, Dean Miner and Gary Gold and Joe Wu, uh, and welcome you all to this Gambier Symposium. Uh, with the goal of celebrating the phenomenal person he was, including his impact, uh, achievements, and legacy. I met Sam in the early 2000s. We were conducting a search for a new chief of nuclear medicine and head of the molecular imaging program that we thought should be significantly expanded. And I was asked to serve as the chair of the search committee. Gary Glazer had already identified Sam as a potential candidate, and we were pleased uh, when Sam applied. There were other very prominent candidates in the pool, but as we went through the interviews and got to know the candidates, Sam simply stood out. Uh, we were happy, uh, really overjoyed when Sam accepted the offer to come to Stanford. During the transition, his transition to Stanford and after he arrived, I got to know him quite a bit better as part of my role was to help him in the initial phases of building the program, acquiring equipment, getting facilities up and running, and especially recruiting talent. We will hear from some of those people who Sam recruited to Stanford during those early years and also later uh, during this program. Back to the search that brought Sam to Stanford, it would not be entirely accurate to say that Sam presented a vision for the field of molecular imaging, because that sounds a little like the elements of the vision were out there and others were also aware of it. Uh, in fact, Sam created the vision and then articulated it. He was able to do that, see a path ahead many years ahead of his time, 
and explain it to audiences at a wide range of levels, whatever was most appropriate to that audience. He did that then and did it so for other initiatives many times afterwards. I think it's fair to say that we are here to celebrate Sam's vision for the future of his domain in science and medicine. I now have the very pleasant task of introducing Aruna Gambier. She, of course, was Sam's spouse and partner for many years. Aruma is, Aruna is very accomplished in her own right with degrees in biochemistry, computer science, and business administration. She was an early employee at Gain Technologies, which was later acquired by Sybase. She was also an early key and successful executive at Siebel Systems. More recently, in one of her collaborations with Sam, she became CEO of Cellside Technologies, uh, a position she still holds. Aruna is active not only in technology and startups, but also in philanthropic foundations and advocacy groups. For today, though, I would like to focus on Aruna, the warm individual we've been fortunate to get to know since she came into our local ecosystem with Sam. Aruna welcomed the department many times into her home, for example, at department-wide events in July to welcome and celebrate our trainees and celebrate the department's achievements, always with grace and charm. I've always had the pleasure of spending time with Aruna in smaller settings, dinners, times at conferences. She's an exceptional individual. Even before Sam's untimely passing, but especially since, Aruna has worked tirelessly to help bring Sam's visions to reality. And we look forward to continuing to work with her toward those goals. Please join me in welcoming Aruna Gambier. Thank you so much, Norbert, for that lovely introduction. And hello, everyone. I want to thank Lloyd, Gary, Joe, and the staff for putting together this symposium to honor Sam's work. And thank you to all the speakers and moderators for sharing your valuable time and wisdom. And thank you all in all the different time zones for tuning into the symposium. But actually, first of all, I want to express my gratitude to Lloyd, Gary, radiology, and Stanford Medicine overall, overall and donors for supporting the next gen cyclotron, which Sam championed, uh, that, the announcement that Gary just made. So exciting. So if you're a radio chemist, come on down to Stanford. Cool stuff going on here, even more cooler stuff coming through. Uh, back to the regularly scheduled <laughs> notes. Um, as you know, um, you know, in this symposium, there are three distinct sessions today that touch on major areas of Sam's research. You might wonder how could one man have been so prolific? Now, these are some questions I've actually been asked before. Did Sam ever sleep? Yes, he did. And another question was, was he serious about signing up to be an Uber driver? Yes, he was, because he thought it would be fun to drive up and see the customer's reaction as he pulled in in his Tesla, and especially if the customer recognized him. Uh, I got many people asking me questions like, is he for real? Uh, I'm here to tell you that he was human. I was married to him for almost 28 years. It was actually a week short of 28 years. So I had a pretty good view into his persona. Um, I know what attracted me to him, and I'm pretty sure this is what drew others to him, was his kindness, intellect, humility, generosity, and his crazy sense of humor, understated sense of humor. Um, he wasn't always thought of as a visionary, as Norbert just said, uh, especially in the early days. This is especially true when his grants were getting rejected right and left. However, he was always a leader. He was a natural born leader and teacher, and uh, even as a child, I was told that he liked to teach math to the neighborhood kids on his blackboard using chalk. So, you know, that, that teaching and leadership was always, it was inborn. And as a true leader, perhaps it was his empathetic nature and his ability to motivate that brought out the best in people around him, his trainees, staff, faculty, and others. 
He boosted their confidence, made them believe in themselves. And so people really tried hard to do their best in order not to disappoint him. Um, you know, he, as Norbert said, he had a real gift in communicating his vision, which helped bring people on board and buy into his vision. You know, as a natural orator with his distinct voice, he could synthesize really hard concepts into understandable terms. So even lay people felt they understood very complicated biology. His uh, main communication tools were, of course, email and phone. I can tell you for a fact that his laptop was attached to his body at all times. He used all kinds of productivity tools for his email, including many human assistants who would scan his inbox 24 seven and sort appropriately, tagging them urgent, super urgent, stat, or something to that effect. He spent many, many hours answering emails all hours of the day and night. It seemed that the email stream would never end because he was one of the few people who actually answered emails from strangers or from people with desperate requests for help or advice on critical health matters. I can tell you that I used to hate that laptop, but now I realize what an impact he was having on so many people around the world. I'm in awe at his impact. I still get people reaching out to me to let me know what he meant to them. Even just a brief encounter with Sam was meaningful to so many people. Now, people trusted him because he was genuine and his interest in you and your work was authentic. He was very open-minded to new ideas and all kinds of collaborations with colleagues from different departments, nonprofits, companies within and outside of medicine. You know, he could pick up concepts very easily and take them to the next level that others hadn't even thought about and create a roadmap to make them a reality. Now, his best ideas usually came to him in the morning before the workday started, because once his day started, it would be nonstop with all his responsibilities for the department, clinic, lab, various organizational commitments and university obligations. Um, so the, the, the critical point for us, actually, the day everything changed for us was the day that Millen, our son, was diagnosed with GBM, brain tumor. Uh, this pushed Sam into another gear. He was already high gear, but I don't know, there was a yet another gear in him, searching frantically to save our Sam. He was relentless, um, but unfortunately there was no happy ending for us. And it did motivate him though to even more towards pushing research and translating that research to the clinic to help extend human health. Now, it's a cruel irony <clears throat> that Sam's own cancer was detected only after it already spread to the bones. Perhaps if some of the tools in precision health were in place, he would have had a chance to live and contribute even more. He told me towards the end days that he felt he had another decade of productive work left in him. Imagine what that could have meant for humanity. You can see that the three main areas of his work are really interrelated and can be applied to many diseases, not just cancer. So let's take cancer, for example. If a person is continually monitored and you see an aberration that could indicate early cancer, you could use the molecular imaging techniques to detect and, the, and treat the cancer early to extend life. True synergy within the various areas of his research. But a guiding principle for Sam was the clinical translation of his work so that patients could benefit sooner than later. This is why when some generous donors raised funds for an endowed professorship named after him, he decided it should be, be used for conducting, focused on translational research, and he picked Joe DeSimone as an inaugural beneficiary. And you'll see Joe is gonna speak about his research in a few minutes. I uh, recently reflected on Sam's nomination for back 1990 Outstanding Graduate Student Gold Medal Award uh, at UCLA. This was written by his PhD advisor at the time, Dr. Carol Newton. And he did win the, the prize, by the way. It said, known for his humor and warmth, as well as his brilliance, Gambier is expected to make an important mark on the world, both as a scientific innovator and as a human being. Those words were passion 
and Sam has indeed left a legacy, but his work is not done. And one of his greatest achievements is the network of trainees from his lab and countless others inspired by him and his work. I can tell you that he was much prouder of his trainees' achievements than any of his own. You know, he shared a few times with many people that he thought of his trainees as candles and that it was the responsibility of mentors like him to ignite and inspire trainees and colleagues to work on improving human health and alleviate suffering. The flames from the many candles he inspired are burning bright. Yesterday, his trainees had an extended Gambier Lab family reunion where not only his trainees from around the world, but their trainees, the grand trainees, got together to reminisce. He would have been proud and satisfied his life's work will carry on through his esteemed colleagues and the next generation of researchers. This will definitely make a difference in people's lives. I want to thank everyone for attending this symposium, and I hope you find it inspiring and motivating. Thank you so much. <laughs>